Hello, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a loading screen. Now to immediately get started, let's go ahead and go to our starter GUI and add a screen GUI. Um, and it's, again, it's I'm always going to say this, it's up to preference if you want to have one screen GUI for all of your things. If you do do this, I would have folders to organize all of your stuff. So here I can name it loading screen. Or you can just have separate screen GUIs, one for your loading screen. But make sure um, that your screen GUI that contains your loading screen, that the ignore gill set, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but you want to make sure this property is turned on. Basically, whenever I run the game, all these buttons at the top, like the, the chat button, just all of this in general, um, if it is off, your loading screen, like the screen GUI will not cover that. And since we want to cover the whole screen for the loading screen, obviously we want that on. Now let's go ahead and add a frame. And I'm just going to make this like a dark color. I'm not, I don't care too much. Now for the size, if you just have in one, um, it will cover your entire screen. Um, and then in this frame, we can add a text label. Now to center it by the X axis, um, for the anchor point for the X, let's say 0 0.5. And X is like left and right, and then Y is up and down. And then down here for the position, we want to make sure the X position is also 0 0.5, and that's going to center it. Now for the Y position, we can do like 0 0.8, um, and the size, we can do like 0 0.3, 0 0.1, it really doesn't matter. The background transparency is 1. Uh, let's go ahead and make it bigger, so text scaled. Uh, we can make the text color white so you can actually read it, and here we can put loading. Now, that might be too big, so in the text label, let's go ahead and add a text, a UI text size constraint. And let's make it so like the max size is like 35 or 40. That looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and move on. Now that we have our actual loading screen here, we can go ahead and start on our script. So let's go ahead and add a local script. Um, there we go. And you want to make sure you name everything. You always want to stay organized. I'm not really going to do that for this video because I'm not going to have anything other than the loading screen. But here, um, the first thing we want to do is... well. First of all, we don't want the, the loading screen visible whenever we're trying to work, so let's go ahead and go to the visibility property and turn that off. But now what we can do is in the script, let's go ahead and first get the frame as a variable, so local like background is equal to script.parent.frame. And here we can say like background.visible is equal to true, so whenever we run the game, uh, it's obviously going to show. Now to make it disappear, um, you can either just do background all visible is equal to false after a period of time, or you can use tweening, which will make it like fade away. And I personally prefer that. Uh, prefer that. So let's get that service. So local tween service is equal to game get service tween service. And we're also going to need the information. So local tween info is equal to tween info dot new. And for the speed, again preference, but I'll do like two seconds. For the easing style, just say enum.easingstyle.linear, which will make it fade in like a straight line. I don't really know how to explain it. Um, but now, what we can do is after our time, so task.wait. Now, you never want to use wait as task.wait is just better, I'm pretty sure, and wait also might be deprecated. But I might make a video over the task library just showing all the different tasks. Uh, dot, just something as it's pretty important and it's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and wait for maybe two seconds before creating our tween. So here, we can say local tween is equal to tween service create. Um, we're going to get our background, so background, our tween info, and then the, and make sure you have it in the squarely, the curly brackets. Uh, I think it's background transparency. Yeah, background transparency is equal to one. Now, because we have two different tweens, because we have our text label two, we also need to make a tween for that. But first, let me just finish this. So first, we'll play the tween. And now we can say tween.completed. We'll wait for it to finish. And now um, we can just delete everything. So script.parent destroy. There we go. Um, and again, back to that other tween. We don't really have to make it a variable. The reason why I made it a variable for this first one like this is so we're able to check for whenever it completes. But because we don't need a variable this time, here we can just say tween service create. Uh, the background dot text label, same thing with the tween info, and then the text transparency this time, text transparency, transparency is equal to 1. And because it's not going to be a variable, we can just directly put play right here. And now if we go ahead and run the script, 
it's going to be visible, and then two seconds after, it fades away. Now, the first extra thing we can do is make it so the player can't move, and basically, in your explorer, if you go ahead and go to starter player, you're able to change the character walk speed and character jump height. So, let's get those as variables, so even if we change it here, we won't have to modify the script. So, let's get that service, so local starter player is equal to game, get service, starter player. And now, we can get those variables, so, uh, I'm gonna reorganize... Here we can say local walk speed is equal to starter player dot character walk speed, and then local jump height is equal to starter player dot character jump height. There we go. And now let's go ahead and disable the player movement. So what we can just say is, or first we need the variable. So let's first get the player service. So local players is equal to game get service players. And because this is a local script, uh, we have a thing where we can just say local player is equal to players dot local player. Um, now we also need the character, so local character is equal to player dot character, and in case it's not loaded yet, we can say or player dot character added, uh, and then we'll wait for that. And finally, we're ne uh, we're gonna need the humanoid, so local humanoid is equal to character find first child. And let's do like wait for child humanoid. There we go. And now let's go ahead and disable the humanoid's like movement. So humanoid dot walk speed is equal to zero, and then humanoid dot jump height is equal to zero. And now, um, after our tween is finished, here we can say the humanoid dot walk speed is equal to walk speed, and then humanoid dot jump height is equal to jump height. There we go. So now, if we run this, we're not going to be able to move. I'm pressing my WASD keys, and I'm still in the same spot. And now, now I'm able to move. There we go. Now, there's one final thing I want to add. This is again optional, where we can disable all scripts, let this one run, and then enable all scripts again. Um, I feel like the purpose of loading screen sometimes, people might think it's useless, but if you go ahead and let, like, your entire client load for, like, a good second before turning on your scripts, it can make it so, um, there, like, won't be any loading bugs, such as finding the character, um, if we have any scripts, like, if we disable it and then enable it a second later, we're not gonna have to have this wait, we're not gonna have to have all of these safety checks, and that's kind of the point. And if you want to do that, let's go ahead and make it a function, because we're going to use it multiple times. Um, so here, we can say function um, toggle scripts. And here, we are going to have our bool value, which basically uh, basically just means true or false. Um, and if we go ahead and get all the scripts, so for underscore, uh, we can do like instance in game get descendants. So like children of children, this gets every single thing in the game. Um, and now we can check if it's a local script, so if, yeah, it kind of filled it in for me there, if instance is a local script, and, because we want to make sure it's not this one, or else it's just gonna not work, obviously, and instance is not equal to, and I just realized I don't have the key, because I have a 60% keyboard, hold on, okay, here it is, this symbol right here, and then equal, and that basically means not equal to script, then let's go ahead and disable it, sir, or not disable it, but change it to the true or false. So instance dot I think it's enabled. Is it enabled? Yeah, it's enabled. Is equal to our boolean. There we go. And now what we can do is here let's go ahead and toggle or like call that function. So toggle scripts, and we'll say to false. So we're gonna turn everything on. And then here before we destroy the script, this should be the very last line. Uh, let's go ahead and turn all of them back on. So, toggle scripts, true. There we go, and now, I'm pretty sure that's the full script we're going to need. If I go ahead and run this, everything should work perfectly. Um, visually, it's, yep, it's the exact same. There we go. Um, if you have any suggestions for any future upload, or if you need help with anything, you can go ahead and comment that down below. And if you want to join my Discord server, the link will be in the description. Other than that, I hope you have a good day or night, and goodbye.